So you may have seen this video on my channel recently, which people seem to like. And in that video, I basically build an end-to-end -end automated print-on-demand store. And what that starts with, uh, spoiler alert, is we scrape Reddit for popular uh, clothing subjects, really just popular subjects, and then we extract through open AI, uh, good one-liners for mugs. And that could apply to t-shirts, any kind of merch item as well from that. And then we push that with Printify. We create the product and then finally to the Etsy storefront. And this kind of bot, this system uh, that we set up in, in that video does this 24 seven around the clock, really, you know, as much as we want. We could run it once per day, we could run it once per hour. Um, that's a whole nother video, but I wanted to extrapolate some of the concepts and the lessons in that video into this one and into how to automate your print on demand business. So we're going to cover some of the actual scripts and strategies employed in this video, as well as a number of other tools and concepts in this one. My goal here is just, if you get into a print on demand business, I want you to be able to focus on uh, the highest leverage kind of uh, part of the business. And for you, that's likely to be the marketing, the creatives, the vision, talking to people, networking. It's not likely to be a lot of the things that uh, through the automation that we'll talk about in this video, you can automate and or delegate. So that's the video, let's get into it. I first wanna very briefly touch on print on demand versus traditional e-commerce. Uh, you may be familiar with print on demand if you are, just skip forward 30 seconds, otherwise I'll keep it quick. Um, generally print on demand or POD means that you don't have to pay for inventory or put any money up up front to create products and someone else manages the entire process once someone purchases an item. They will create it or print it, quote unquote. Uh, they will ship it, they will put it in a package, they will accept payments, they'll do everything. Um, and if you compare that to traditional, uh, the problem with traditional e-commerce, if you wanted to start a clothing brand, for example, is that you have to go to, say, the Chinese or what, whoever else uh, that's gonna manufacture your item, and then you have to order 4,000 t-shirts up front to get a decent price. Otherwise, you're paying $70 and, uh, per unit, say at the minimum order quantity. Um, so you pay for your 4,000 and you spent, let's say, you know, $8 per, and you're gonna sell them for 16 bucks uh, or 20 bucks. Well, you just have to spend $32,000 on inventory. And then where are you gonna store your 4,000 shirts? Now you have to get space for that or a lot space for that. There's a lot of risk there. There's a lot of money and there's a lot of time because you have to wait six months for uh, you know, those people, not, not actually six months, but let's say three months is a very real number for your manufacturer who's overseas to create the whole bulk unit and to ship it to you, uh, often on a you know, shipping container or whatnot. So, Print on demand is much easier than that. You simply upload the design. So let's say you have a design for a shirt and I'll get into what kind of products you can create in a second. You have your design for your shirt, you upload it to some kind of print on demand company, and then you connect that um, company, the, the print on demand supplier to a storefront. So that could be Amazon, Shopify, Walmart, uh, Etsy, eBay, or your own website. And then once someone, a customer purchases the item on eBay, on Amazon, on your website, uh, then the print on demand company creates the product. So they print the t-shirt with your design, your logo, um, and then they ship it to the customer and that's it. So what that shifts the, the allocation, kind of the, the bottleneck of the business, it shifts it from, I have to have $50,000. I have to take on a lot of risk. Um, into you have to be really good at marketing and you have to focus on really building a brand. And if you can do that, you'll do really well with this model. Um, now people associate print on demand just with merchandise like t-shirts, right? Really there's a whole world now. There's a whole world of suppliers out there and a whole world of products that you can create designs for and sell. That's everything from any number of skincare products, uh, any typical business merchandise. So. Uh, you know, pens, pencils, notebooks, backpacks, um, desks, chairs, etc. Um, I did a, uh, a energy drink brand once for a friend that was like customized to um, a kind of little mission he was on of trying to run a, a four minute mile. So I called the energy drink brand four minute mile. 
Um, any type of food item, right? Like there's, there's so much out there that falls into this category of print on demand. And what it effectively means is that if you have the brand, then you can get the product created. And that is the massive advantage of print on demand versus traditional e-commerce. Now, one key step to build a business that stands out from a crowd and to give your business a digital home is to build your own website with a dot store domain, right? We're talking about print on demand in this video, which means you will likely have a website or a digital home for your brand where you sell your own products. And dot store is the perfect domain for selling things online because it actually helps you sell more. That's because a detailed study showed that websites with a dot store domain get 87 percent more traffic on average and a 2x higher on average ranking on Google. And that's because when customers see your website is a dot store domain, let me erase this and I'll write dot store, they instinctively know that it is an online store where you're selling something like, for example, your print on demand products. And that helps you actually materially sell more. So dot store is built for sellers. It is the perfect domain for anyone selling anything online. And that is also why it's used by over one and a half million sellers like Mr. Beast, Ronaldo, Rihanna, and Emirates Airlines, which is, I mean, that's a pretty cool set of customers. And for a limited period of time, you can get a dot store domain for just 99 cents by using this code or go to that link in the description and use that code to get your dot store domain for 99 cents. So now I'm gonna show you me actually going and checking out and buying one of these. And as a bonus, when you get a dot store domain, you also unlock free access to the plus version of elevate.store. This isn't just another discount site, it's a curated toolkit for online sellers like you. So from marketing tools to e-commerce software, Elevate.store provides exclusive deals designed to help you launch and scale your business. We're talking Canva, Shopify, AutoDS, and many, many more. It is everything you need to succeed all in one place, and it is yours for free when you choose .store. That said, make sure to, again, check out that link and use that code, and now let's get back to the video. So now let's jump into my computer, and I'll cover the, the approach that we took, and we'll break down some of the automation elements there from that last video I mentioned, this one where we made a merch bot. Okay, so I wanna walk you through the singular Python script that this whole merch bot system is uh, hosted on that you can run locally with kind of a cron tab system or you can deploy to a server that will run it autonomously. Uh, and the reason I wanna show you this is because I think it's a very useful frame and a base for integrating all kinds of systems into your print on demand store to automate whatever part of it you want. So I want you to understand generally how this works, we'll walk through it briefly, and then you can take what you want out of there. Um, and I'll make this script available as well, just check the description for that. So there's a few parts here. What this system and the script generally does is it scrapes from uh, Reddit, and it scrapes, and you'll, you'll see this in a second and how it applies, uh, it scrapes essentially popular posts from it. It feeds that into o uh, OpenAI, which we have the API key let me select that right there and then it creates an image locally from that and in a future video as well we'll, we'll merge just a text image with actual uh, designed images so like you know ai images and whatnot as well for now that's just text and then that image so the text with a white background uh, is applied and then sent to printify where it's pushed through to etsy so fully automatic and again we'll, we'll walk through how to do this those are the four set up kind of the four platforms you'll need. You're gonna need credentials on Reddit, uh, the Reddit developer platform, same with X or Twitter, then OpenAI and Printify. But again, if you just wanna pull from you know Reddit and you wanna apply that to a different app than Printify or a different supplier, you can do so. And same with uh, using say X directly and scraping from there as opposed to Reddit, just however you want to use this set of automation tools, you can do so. Essentially, first, um, what we're doing is getting uh, content from Reddit itself, and this starts with a list of subreddits. Uh, you can also pull uh, just generally trending tweets from just Reddit, but what we're doing here is specifically subreddits that are applicable. So in this case, we're choosing subreddits where we can get kind of one-liners from that would make sense for a piece of merchandise and apparel. So it's going to randomly choose one of the subreddits. We can just you know, edit these and, and change them out for whatever subreddit we, uh, we want. 
And then after that's uh, selected, it's going to clean that data. And then what it's going to do is, uh, like I said, send that to ChatGPT. Uh, now, the way that works is you choose the, the model with, with OpenAI, and then you give it instructions, or you give it a prompt. Uh, and this is the prompt that we're using. So we're saying, select the best text from the list that would make a great mug design. And you can change that out for whatever type of product you want. And then we just tell GPT, ChatGPT, this is what a great slogan looks like. And also only minimally edit the text don't, from Reddit. Don't just redo it across the board. Uh, and then also just uh, do not include anything that would get this product you know, shut down or banned. And then in that, um, in that message, the prompt that we send to GPT, we include uh, this variable, which is the actual uh, list of texts that we pulled from Reddit, which we pull uh, up here and generate. So that's sent to OpenAI. Um, and then we have to create the image after we get back from ChatGPT the response. Um, and then you can see here how exactly we're creating that image. Uh, so essentially, we're choosing, you know, the font size, the font itself, uh, then also how to size it because we don't want it to go off kind of the size of the image. Um, and then these, the in the case of Printify, and this changes depending on where you you want to actually send the product to, so to speak. Uh, we need a 1200 by 1200 pixel image or just kind of a box. Uh, and you can see in the last video as well uh, what exactly those end products look like. Uh, and then this is just, again, more formatting, more kind of cleaning. And then once that works, well, we have our image. Um, there's a lot of work here and really just making sure it fits, like that's most of the actual code. And then we can connect to Printify. And every supplier, like I said, is going to have a slightly different system for this. Um, and it's, there's going to be a list that you, uh, you need. Let's see this right here, this product data on a per product basis. Uh, so in the case of Printify, we need a mug ID specifically, so an actual variant of a mug. And you can see that right here. This this 33719 is a 11 ounce mug variant in pr the Printify store. So that's the kind of product that we're then attaching uh, different elements to. And you can see uh, those elements, right? So we're attaching the image we created to this variance, this kind of mug, this 11 ounce mug, and then we're pulling uh, the title from uh, the actual text that's on the mug, uh, and then the same with the description and whatnot. So one other thing to note as well is that you have to send to a specific store. So let me see, yeah, right here. So the shop ID, uh, which I included in the credentials on the top here, is going to be the store in your Printify account that you're actually pushing this through to. So after that's done, um, you're largely done. Like you, you can, let's see, let's just go through here. Um, that is essentially it. And those are all functions that kind of do those parts. And then in this main function right here, uh, and then we go through and just do those four things in order. So fetch the Reddit content, select the slogan, create the image, and then upload to Printify. So that's how this works. Uh, again, the, sc uh, the script, the script will be in the description. And also just, I think, generally be aware that you can play around with these systems like this, whether it's Shopify, whether it's Amazon, whether it's your own website, you can automate a lot of those core processes in addition to some of the automation we'll talk about later in this video. So I hope that uh, that helps you. Next, I want to touch on delegation versus automation. Uh, I've covered this in, I think, a book chapter, actually, a while back. Um, but essentially, after you, oh, let's see, automation. After you validate a business concept, you're focusing on growth. You really want to, you want to scale. You want to do everything you can to just, hey, you made it work. How big can we get this thing? While you know maintaining profitability and whatnot. Now, at some point, what you want to do with your business is focus on these two things, delegation and or automation. Delegation is just, I'm gonna get someone else to do it. Automation is, I'm gonna make sure it gets done automatically, just set it and forget it. Some combination of these two things is going to free up your time so you don't have to be a slave to the thing that you create. And that's why a lot of people get you know, into business, into their own kind of entrepreneurship process in the first place. It's because you wanna spend your time how you want. So you probably don't wanna you, you want to at least have the choice um, you know, of what you're working on. And so these two things are what actually let you do that. And both of them can be done in a print-on-demand setting. Delegation is just bringing people on board. Contractors, VAs, in-person people, just across the board. 
um, that's a big thing to consider. And then otherwise, what we're talking about in this video is automation. So just wanted to touch on that for a second. Now let's go back into my computer to look at a whole range of other tools that are important when it comes to specifically automation and just keep delegation in mind as kind of the alternative or the supplement there. Okay, so I've gone over make.com and Zapier briefly, uh, Zapier briefly, but really make.com in another video that I'll put on the screen now. I recommend you go watch that if you want a little bit more of an in-depth uh, dive into what exactly these do. Generally, these are both platforms that let you create scenarios or kind of workflows that automatically do things for you. For example, if we just go into a template in this account here, let's wait a second for this to open and we can see some kind of trigger that's going to initiate the workflow. So in this case, a custom uh, webhook. And then that's going to do something that results in a Google Sheets um, column or row being updated. And when you think about the implications of this, uh, when it comes to print on demand specifically, this means that considering how developed make.com and Zapier are, that you can integrate with all kinds of services, whether that's the front end, for example, we'll type I uh, mistyped there, Shopify, right? So Shopify is going to have uh, all kinds of uh, different apps that we can connect to and we can automate with, whether that's the actual print-on-demand provider, whether it's a CRM, whether it's Google Sheets, um, and then the same over here with Make, which is just slightly more AI-focused. So there's a whole world here, and I, I don't want to spend you know an hour or more going over uh, the specifics uh, in this video. I want this to be more of an overview. So what I recommend that you do if you aren't familiar with these tools uh, and how they can apply to print on demand, go watch some other videos, some more you know thorough guides, and also look specifically uh, at the triggers and the connections and whatnot uh, that you can build and the sequences you can build uh, for the stack that you have for your print on demand business. So again, Shopify is one. If I just search print on demand, uh, excuse me, I'm on Shopify. Let's go back here. If I search print on demand, this will pull up some other print on demand uh, integrations that work with Zapier as well. And there's all kinds of things you can do here as well uh, with make.com. And I highly recommend looking through that template library as well. So that is how you can automate um, and how you should, what you should look into automating uh, with. So specifically make.com and Zapier. Okay, and again, make sure to go get your .store domain at this link or the link in the description. And that said, that's the video. I'll see you in the next one, and cheers.